weekend, we learned that Bobby Charlton, Sir Bobby Charlton, had died. It was a moment of sadness for everyone who loved football and also, I would suspect, for many English people who didn't know much about football, but they knew about Bobby and they loved him and respected him. He epitomised a certain kind of Englishman, decent, modest and brilliant. And in the England of his time, 1966, when he won the World Cup and throughout his career, 68, when he won the Champions League, or as it now is, but the European Cup at that time, Bobby Charlton was, well, we'll find out in a moment, because we're going to talk to somebody who played with Bobby and against him. That's the great John Giles, our own version of Bobby Charlton, if you like, the best of us. And Bobby, I think, was understood by the British people to represent the best of them, the English people, I should say, specifically. And his greatness as a footballer is something that would warm the coldest heart. John, thank you very much for joining us. We'll talk about the weekend's football later, briefly, but... The death of Bobby being announced, we knew that he had dementia and had not been well. You were at Manchester with him, I think, for six years, maybe, or was it a little longer? Seven. Seven years, yeah. He was 86, three years older than you. You told me on a number of occasions, if my memory serves me correctly, that he was the greatest player you ever played against or saw. Best player I played with or against. Um, yes. Yeah. Without yeah. doubt. Without doubt. Yeah, he was... Uh, but my first the first time I saw Bobby, I went over to Manchester United. As you know, you couldn't go until you were 15. I was only 14, so they took me over the pre-season uh, to... to um, you know the way they, they want to keep holiday, you. yeah. Yeah. So it was pre- pre-season training, I mean, and it was absolutely brilliant because... Uh, I was I was only fourteen, but I was able to watch them pre season training and the practice matches and that. Yes. And Bobby was only I was Bobby would have been seventeen. Yes. And he got in on most of the practice matches. And I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean how good he was. He yes. was only seventeen playing against, you know, Duncan Edwards and yes. uh, Roger Bourne and Tommy Taylor uh, Taylor, all these lads. Yeah. And uh he was outstanding. Yes. I mean, Yes. He was outstanding, you know. Yeah. He, was, he, he, he did then what he did later on, only better, when he, obviously, when he got older. Yes. Um, so that was my, the first time I saw Bobby Charlton. He, nobody had ever heard of him at that stage. He was only 17. He hadn't played in the first team. Yeah. And he was, he, was, he was the best player on the pitch. And that group of players, Roger Byrne was the captain of the Busby Babes, as they became known. Duncan Edwards was the heartbeat of the team. He was in digs with Bobby. They did their national service together. And Bobby, as you told me at the weekend when we talked about this, Bobby worshipped Duncan in particular. Yeah. And Duncan's death, only yards from where Bobby was, was a terrible blow. That seemed to mark him for life, John. Um, yeah. But in, he, in the sense he, he, he that was... his modesty, never getting gone over the top when he won, you know, you see a guy like, God forgive me for mentioning him, Jack Grealish, when City won the Champions League last year, he went mad. There was none, none of that with Bobby. No, Bobby never went mad, I mean, he was <clears throat> Bobby was, was, was amazing because Bobby was just getting in the first team at the time of the Munich air disaster. Yes. And you know, the great players, Duncan Edwards and a lot of great players were, 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 yeah. were killed in that particular uh, uh uh, yeah. situation. Liam Whelan, our own Liam Whelan from Dublin. Yeah, our own Liam Whelan, yeah. yeah. And 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 they were the they were both be babes. They were they, you could pick two teams from it. Amen. Yes. You know? And uh Bobby I think he played in that particular match, but he was only sort of getting in the team. Yes. He's only a young fella. Yes. And uh he had to carry the club. Yes. Afterwards. Really carry the club after the Munich air disaster. Yes. He was absolutely brilliant. Yes. Amen. They just came, because like nowadays, they, they wouldn't have been allowed to play, I don't think. Eight players died yeah. in the crash. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, John, Che Brennan, a friend of both of ours and a player who was just outside of that team, 
she right. played in their first match after the Munich air crash. I know that. I think he had to play yeah. out of position. I'm not sure. Did Bobby out, play? Outside in? left. Yeah, outside outside left. Left. <laughs> yeah, and he was a fullback in the end, a right fullback when yeah. they won the European Cup yeah. in 1968. Yeah. But Bobby had to, as you say, carry that team. Yeah, and it, it was, it was a, I think there was a big, obviously a big stress on him. Yes. But Bobby was always, well, I didn't know him that well before the Munich Gardens, but he was a quiet individual. Yes. But, you know, when, that, when, when he had to play after me, he got even quieter. Yes. I mean, yes. You know, he was, he was, and he got to shake Bobby. Bobby didn't have the shakes before the Munich Gardens. There was huge responsibility on him. He came straight from the crash, I think it was a week or two later, and started to play yes. in, in, the, in the cup final uh, match against Sheffield Wednesday. Yes. All the way through. Yes. You know? Yes. And, and there was no guidance in those days like you, you would have today, quite correctly. Yes. Uh, so, but he just did it. He, he did it from, from, he was only getting into the team as a young fella. And then he had to carry the team through to the rest of the season, getting to the cup final. Yes. Uh, he, was, he was brilliant, but I think it took a lot out of him, Eamon, at that particular time. Yes. And uh, just for the record books, you know, to know how... His greatness was reflected. He won everything in the game that you could win. Mm. He won the Ballon d'Or. He was Footballer of the Year. He was the Golden Boot winner in the World Cup. And, of course, he won a World Cup winner's medal with England. He was Manchester United's record scorer until Wayne Rooney, who played many more games than him, surpassed him. He was United's leading appearance maker. And he, all the records he set endured for yeah. half a century yeah, or more. Big record, I mean, him and Nobby, the only two players ever in England that won the Champions League and the World Cup. Yes, and Nobby Styles, of course. And it's interesting to note about Bobby's character, John, that Shea Brennan and Nobby, both Nobby was your brother-in-law, of course, and Nobby was such a great player, underestimated by everybody apart from Al uh, Ramsey. And Shea, Shea was a lovable rogue, and, I mean, Bobby, although he was a very serious person in many ways, there would be a twinkle in his eye. I remember being on the coach when I was only a kid cleaning the boots, but I remember going to a match when I was 12th man, and I remember Bobby bumming a smoke. He didn't smoke, but he bummed one. But he liked the game of cards, and he loved Shay, and he loved Nobby, because there, there was always a twinkle in their eyes, and there was always yeah. a laugh going on. So he wasn't the kind I'm of... Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Em. Yeah. And also, they, they were original Busby babes. Exactly. That's the point I was coming to, that they I'm were... Sorry, sorry, Em. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you're absolutely right, because it's a point I made myself in a piece I wrote, that they were the real deal in terms of the authenticity of their experience. They'd been at the club at that moment. And, of course, after the Munich air crash... Jimmy Murphy ran the club. He had been Matt's assistant. Yeah. Jimmy was the coach. Matt Busby wasn't able. To, he was not able to come straight back. And Jimmy Murphy was a huge figure, John, in the club. And he was a huge figure. I interviewed Bobby for my Busby book. And the respect, affection and love he had for Jimmy. And he attributed so much of what he achieved to Jimmy's Guidance, shall we say, coaching, they call it now. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, in a big way. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy was, um, like, I, I came through the ranks, and same as you did, the Busby Babes, and onto the first, got it, got it the second team with Jimmy Murphy. Jimmy was the best coach I ever came across. Yes. He was a hard, he was a hard guy. Yeah, yeah. No nonsense from him. He'd tell you off, tell you straight out. Uh, and Bobby, he would have coached Bobby a lot. Yes, he would have been the influence because in those days with with, uh, with the club, Jimmy was the one that looked after the U team and the reserves. Yes, not Matt. You you, no. you wouldn't see uh, Matt Busby or Sir Matt no. Busby a lot. Jimmy was the man, and Jimmy yes. would tell say, say to the boss, right? He's he's ready or he's not ready. But but it, it, you'd have that two or three years influence with Jimmy. Yes, and he was brilliant. Yes, Damon. yes, he was brilliant. And Bobby idolized Jimmy because yes. Bobby learned an awful lot, like most players, most young players, from Jimmy Murphy. But Bob, Jimmy was the real influence on Bobby. 
when he was a young fella. Yeah, to convince him as, as much as anything that he what he could do and how best to use the gifts that he had. I mean, I was yeah. noting, John, mostly when you see the old footage of Pele and, you know, the great Stanley Matthews and the players of the past, it looks mm-hmm. dated. It looks slower and, you know, much more pedestrian. But when I saw Bobby's stuff at the weekend, he's just as powerful and as quick and as deadly as any of the players played today. And the footage shows that. Oh, yeah, yeah. His gifts were abundant, John, weren't they? Had everything. Yeah, he, he had everything, I mean, he was, um, as you say, he was quick. He was two-footed. Uh, he could score goals from 40 yards out with either foot. Yeah. And he, Bobby did it instinctively, Eamon. Yes. Uh, I never had a conversation. He could pass out as well, couldn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah he could do, do all those things, Eamon. And and he he did it instinctively. Yes. In my opinion, in many ways. I never had a discussion with Bobby about the game. Yes. For example. Yes. And, you know, um, he, he, he wasn't a, a player that was thinking, well, I can go here, I can go there to, to, to decade the game. Yeah. He decayed it by getting on the ball. I, I, I might have said to you, I played with Bobby for a few years. Yes. And Bobby was in the inside left position. I was in the inside right position. And there was a lot of times when Bobby got the ball in the old left half position. I was in the right half position, in a very good position to receive it. Yeah. Most of the time, I wouldn't get it. Yes. Right? But just when you were about to say, and I never would say to Bobby, <laughs> for heaven's sake, He's gone past two, three, four players, Eamon. And the ball's in the right And he's having a shot. <laughs> and threatening the goal from 40 yards. Yes. Right? So he didn't need me. Yes. At all. Yes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do indeed. Like when I yes. went to Leeds, I was playing with Bremner and we'd, 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 we'd talk to each other, you push over there. But Bobby, Bobby didn't like that. No. I, mean, I, I think I might have told you to tell, my tale with Bobby when, when, when I was playing inside right to his inside left. When you've got a, a goal kick against you, I mean, you balance up. Yes. Because sometimes in, in you're playing the inside, you could be get on the left wing, but you get a chance to balance up. Yeah. And when I was doing that, I was in the inside, Bobby, and Bobby used to wander over to me. Yeah. So I was three years younger than Bobby. Yeah. And I say, Bobby, push over. Yeah. And after two or three times of that, yeah, he'd say, F off. Yes. Leave me alone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't yeah. want it. He, it. I was disturbing him. Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, yeah. In what he was doing in the game. So. Yeah. He, he was. He was a natural. I never had a discussion with Bobby after the game, where where he say, "Look, John, you could do this. Or I could do that." Didn't yeah. He wasn't into that. No. A pure natural. He just did it. Yes. And pure but, natural. Yeah. Just instinctive. Yeah. Instinctive stuff with with the ability and the power. To score goals, yes. From, from, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Forty yards out with yes. either foot, yes. You know, so he didn't need, he didn't need anything. Uh, he didn't need anything like that. He just did it. Now, after Munich and into the, you know, Busby came back. I don't think he had, to, he didn't feel. I'm sure because he was never really in the man, you know, health wise, and I suppose in many ways that he'd been in terms of drive and that. But he didn't feel he had time to build another team. So he bought a lot of players into the club. The most yeah. notable was to break the English club record to bring Dennis Law back from Milan. And he paid 147000 John, which is only small change every week for some of the players that are playing the game now. Yes, oh yeah. I mean, but but Dennis coming back to the club was a big deal for Busby. He brought No Cantwell, he bought David Hurd, he bought Morris Setters, and others that you will remember probably. Albert Quicksall. Albert Quicksall was the big buy. He broke the British transfer record yeah. to buy Albert for forty five thousand yeah. from Sheffield Wednesday. That was his first yes. big buy, I think, yeah. during the period I was there. What effect did it have on, say, Nobby? on you and on Bobby because it did make it a very different club from the club that had grown up, the boys that had grown up together and been tutored by Jimmy Murphy. It made it a very different place, didn't it, dressing room from training ground and match day? Oh, definitely. 
time in because these were different personalities, you know, strong yeah. personalities, Morris Sellers, Noel yeah. uh, 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 Cantwell. Uh, it was different. Yeah. And because, uh, like, Matt, well, Mr. Busby, I saw Matt, but I would yes. don't want to be cheeky, Carl, but he, he, he had the Busby babes, as you, you've mentioned there, Eamon, yeah. too. And they came through Jimmy Murphy. And they were all young fellas. Yes. So there was nobody disputing Jimmy Murphy. No. Or Matt Busby. No. But when, when, when these lads came in, there was a lot of disputes. Oh, Matt yeah. Busby. I was in the team at the time, Eamon. And it was, what, what's he doing? But, you yeah. Know, so, like, Matt, Matt lost them. Matt, well, the, 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 the season, as you know, uh, we nearly got rele- relegated. Amen. Yeah, and, and from, from then on, then he started introduce the younger players again. Yeah, George Best came into the George, team. Nobody started coming yes. into the team. Yes, and he got rid of those. He got rid of those lads because yeah. they didn't understand the Busby way. They were coming from different clubs as mature players and had their own ideas. You know. Yeah, I tell you a story which I may have told you before and may not have. No Cantwell was a great thinker about the game, Noel, and he came from West yeah. Ham where Ron Greenwood, and they he, they were great thinkers about the game and they had ideas about the game and coaching and mm-hmm. all of that, whereas at Manchester United it was instinctive. So I was one day in the afternoon when we were still hanging around, we were only apprentices and we were still back and Noel came back to do a bit of training and he was recovering from injury and we were both in the bath together and he, like I'd been at the club before Noel came and yeah. he, he said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm grand, you know, da, da, da. I was doing my own thing. And he said, listen, can I ask you a question? And I said, yeah, of course. He says, was this fucking place always like this? He says, it's a fucking shambles. He said, nobody's doing any work. Now, you, you'll you know what all that means. <laughs> work was yeah. the, the sort of, you know, tactics and all that stuff. And I said, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, what Noel was saying was, and God rest Samar, that this off-the-cuff thing, this training out in the car park, and it was on the car park, and you could get your shins very sore and your knees very sore very quickly. But that was great training. That was the way, wasn't it, John, of Manchester United? It was, you'd it learn, was, it you'd was. learn in the morning playing with great players and against them in, the tra- in, the, in, in, in training. Yeah, what, what, the, what the, the, those lads coming into the club didn't realise yeah. I mean, that most of these young lads came through the U team with Jimmy Murphy. Yes. Jimmy Murphy was the most knowledgeable person I yes. came across yes. in football. Yes. Right. And this wasn't complicated. No. Jimmy Murphy stuff wasn't complicated. This is what you do, John, in the right position. This is what you do there. All over the pitch, this is what you do to the players. That, in my opinion, is coaching. Yeah, and the other thing was they bought the best yo- kids. That was supposed to be one of his ideas. We'd get the best young schoolboys at 14, 15 years of age, which yeah. was the sign them and, tr- and put them in, and they'll learn the game because they have the gifts. It was not the basic idea. Yeah, well, they did. Well, when you go at 15, I mean, everybody has a lot to learn. I mean, they're yeah. very gifted in what they do, but they have a lot to learn. That's where Jimmy Murphy came into it. Yes. Jimmy Murphy made the best of her abilities by saying, to, I remember him saying to me one time, you know, in the match, this is simple. Well, it's supposed to be simple, though. John, you're getting too far ahead of the ball. You've yes. got to be back and get into the right position, positional yes. sense. Now, uh, no accounts when and Morris Setters never ever talked about that. No. No, no. It'd be more complicated, Damon. Yeah, four two four or four right. three three or whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever you we, we have got over this over and that. This one, Jimmy Murphy. Look, people say about football, it's a simple game. Football, in my opinion, is not a simple game, Damon. It's a it, it's a very anything but simple. And what the great show coaches do, like Jimmy Murphy and other people in the game, they reduce it to simplicity by their coaching. Yes, exactly. No counts well, and Morris Sellers coaching wasn't simple no, no. It, was more, it was more complicated and that's what that's what they didn't understand they yes. didn't come through the ranks with Jimmy Murphy and St. John you're this and that they, yeah. this was this was real coaching and, 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 and the players don't forget he was getting the best school by players in England Ireland Scotland and yes. Wales yes 
Yes. So they, they actually didn't need much coaching. They needed some, as I did and everybody did, but not complicated stuff. No. So when you got David Hurd coming in, these were coming coming from clubs that didn't have the coaching that no. Manchester United have. They thought it was too simple, Eamon. Yeah, and basically what it was building on wasn't some abstract idea, but it was the, the qualities you, John Giles, or you, Bobby Charlton, had innately arrived with. And they were improving exactly. those things. And and yes. then and then unifying then those things into a team. Yes. And that was the secret. So that was that the was, magic. That um, was the magic, yeah. John. Well, yes. it was. Yeah, yeah. So when the other lads came in, as you say, with the no Cantwell Boris, they they didn't see that. No. They saw it was there was no coaching going on in the way that they they were used to it. One of the simple ways you can put this, John, is great players aren't made; they're born. <laughs> and one example of this was George Best. Yeah, he was in the car park. No one ever coached George. I mean, Jimmy was still there. He was still there when I was there. But they just let him play. And then yeah. he never played many games in reserves. You know, George couldn't get in the reserves. He couldn't get in the youth team. Actually, one year when I was there, <laughs> it was unbelievable. But Buzzy put him straight in the first team. And then mm. straight from the car park, John, and the five yeah. sides into the first team. And that was George unvarnished, uncoached, go for it. And then that was the, the spark that started, I think, and ended in 68. But there were a lot of rocky years, weren't there, in between. But throughout that oh, period, yeah. Yeah. there was a tribute to, to Bobby's dedication, commitment to that club that some of his greatest football was played in those bad years. Yeah, well, well what happened in, in, in there, I mean, it, it, it changed fairly quickly. I mean, I left in 63, and, and after we won the Cup, but we'd had a bad season. Uh, and I think one by one, uh, Matt got those, the, the lads that he bought out. Yes. Out of, yes. Out of the team. And, and got yeah. back to the, to the Busby Babe situation. Nobby came came back yes. into Georgie Best came into the back of the team. No yes. can't win. all these players yes. left. And if you look at look at the team that yes. won went on to win the European Cup after a few years, there was I think if you look at them, I think they were all Busby babes. That team that yes. won the, the, the European maybe the goalkeeper wasn't. But you had Nobby coming into the team, Georgie Best came into the team, uh Brian Brian Kidd, yeah, I think, Brian came into the team. Shay Brennan came in and yeah. right back. Tony Dunn, Tim, yeah. who came straight from Shelburne. Well, Tony came. Great player. Yeah, Sh- Tony came from Shelburne, Eamon, when he was only about 18 yeah. or 19 and went on to be one of yeah. the great players. But he was he was more yes. or less a Busby babe. Do you know what I mean? I mean he, he wasn't. Tony yes, came he in, was, he yeah. wasn't saying, we don't do this or we don't do this. He just got on with the do- job. No. So Stephanie was the goal. It was Shay Brennan. Yeah. Nobby. Bill Foulkes. He was just a great natural defender, wasn't he, John? Tony. Well, Tony, Tony was, was just was, a great was a, natural defender. He knew how to yeah, defend. He, was, he didn't have to be taught. He was brilliant, Damon. Tony was brilliant. So yes. I played against Tony when he played for Finbar's under 15. Yes. And he, and he didn't get in the international school by international team. He, he wasn't that, he wasn't no, that no. good. But over the two or three years, he matured unbelievably well into a, t- a really, really top-class player. Yeah, Billy Bean, the great Billy Bean, who was a great scout and knew his stuff, sent Tony over. After I went, I used to meet Tony. We were both messenger boys. We used to meet in the street. And I told him I was going to Manchester. He'd be a lucky devil. And, <laughs> and t- Tony was playing right back for Shells at the time in the League of Ireland, I remember yes. seeing him. But he, he did yes. become a very a great player and a great natural player. Let me ask you, John, yeah. about playing against Bobby. But you did for Leeds. Yeah. And Jack, of course, was in the Leeds team. How hard was he to play against? And how hard, because Don Revy was the new school of coaches. How how did you talk about stopping Bobby? And how successful were you? Probably very successful, I suspect. Well, Manchester United were, were the better team, Eamon, when we first got into the first division. You know? Yes. But after two years, three years, United went down quite a bit they as did, we yes. came up, right? Yes. Dennis Law got injured and 
Bob then Georgie wasn't behaving himself as well. So we we actually got on yes. top of, of United uh, now. And Bobby was um, yes. Uh, it, it, how can I describe Bobby? Bobby was a natural in the way that he played. He did fighting a, a long battle. Yeah, yeah, but he was playing. He always played off the cuff, Bobby. Right now, I felt yes. I found when when I was playing for Leeds, I was playing midfield, and Billy Bremlin was midfield. Um, you could sort of outmaneuver Bobby. Do you know yes. what I mean? I mean like limited yeah. field, in other words, positional sense. Bobby played totally off the cuff, Eamon. You know, yes. and, and yes. He, he, he used to get exasperated, if that's the right word. When Yes, it is, but, yes. But, but, but didn't really know how to stop it, if you know what I mean. Yes, yeah, but you had a, you guys had a game plan. In other words, course. Bobby played, he played everything off the cuff. Yeah. And there's certain times in the game, as you know, this game, that there has to be a, a tactical situation. You have to know look, this is not happening, this is not happening, we have to do this, we have to do it, or I have to do this, or I have to do that. Bobby Bobby didn't do that. He, he, no. He didn't have a knowledge of the game, Eamon, of what he was doing. You know what I mean? Now, this this yeah. sounds a bit odd, but when did the other team was, yeah. were, had the ball and that, Bobby got annoyed on that, but didn't do what needed yeah. to be done yeah. to stop it. Just let me ask you about him as a person, John. I found him always to be a really very special person. There was no vibe of him. There was no big time Charlie of him. He loved oh, no. Jay and Nobby and he had a game of cards on the coach. There was no sort of, I'm special. None of that. No, no, no. Bobby, Bobby in the right company loved to sing song. He was a big Sinatra man, Eamon. Right, he loved it, but really? he had to be the right that. company. He was very, very particular. Yes. <laughs> who he, who he, would have a sing song with. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was Bobby. Was he was he was, he was he, no big headedness about Bobby, but he could be a bit grumpy at times, Eamon. You know, he, he, could, okay. he, could, he, could, he could be moody, Bobby. Yes. Yeah. But in the right company, if was like I know when 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 I was there, now when we were going to, he was a real Busby babe. Lad, he loved all the, the, yes. the lads coming in because when we went to London, saying that Nobby got in the team, shot there yes. would always be Bobby, myself, Jay, and Nobby in the, at the table. You know, there was a yes. four at the table. Yes, yes. But Bobby yes. was very, very, yes. very, very, very like that. I mean, he could, he could be, he could be moody. Yeah. You know, uh, but so we all can be. Yeah, and he didn't like George's antics, and it, I don't think him and George ever. Hit it off. I don't think he was mad about Dennis either. I don't know. You'd know better. But no, he, he wasn't mad about anybody coming in, into the club, Eamon. He was, you know, yeah. he, he was a busby bad man, but he was yes. he was okay. He wasn't really paddy with Dennis. He wasn't really paddy paddy Crer. And uh, I, 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 I left just as far. Uh, you you think you don't? He didn't like jocks, don't you? But, well, he, <laughs> well, he used to say, he used to say that a bit. You know, it sounds sound, sounds odd, but he was. He, he he could be odd in many ways. He could be moody in, in many ways, but 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 decent, Eamon. He yeah, wouldn't no, do a bad decent, turn to yes. any. He wouldn't do a bad turn to anybody. No. Uh, now he could be moody. No. No, he, no. He, I had to take him as he was, uh, and I got on okay with him. But he, but he could be moody with me. Uh, he, he, Shay was his big yeah. pal. But he could be he could be moody with anybody. Yeah. That's the way he was. And I think especially Im- immediately after the Unigar disaster. Like Bobby changed yes. after that, yes. Eamon. You know, he had so much responsibility. Yes, yes. he was. He, he, he was yes. like he, like taking the enjoyment out of somebody. He was so busy and and, yes. and so responsible yes. for the team. But as a person, I really like Bobby. I, I thought he was a decent, yes. genuine person. Yes, and of course, it's always important to remember he lost so many of his dear friends, Eddie Coleman. Duncan Edwards, and he loved Duncan, didn't he, John? And they were in digs together. Oh, yeah. He, he great admiration. And he me, for, yeah, we were talking about for, it last week. You said he, he worshipped yeah. him. Yes. Duncan was a few months older than him, wasn't he? Not, not much older. Bobby, in my opinion, was a really good lad, as we say in our terms. He's a really good lad. Yes. In the right yes. company, he'd be singing his head off Sinatra stuff, you know? Uh, yes. In the right company. Yeah, yeah, Bobby yeah, had yeah. to be in the right company. Uh, or else he wouldn't. Or he, yeah. he wouldn't. He wouldn't. No, he wouldn't mix mix easily 
but, but, but yes, he was, he I was understand decent. That. Yeah. And in, in football terms, I often said to you when you were young, Flevin, he was the best player I ever played yeah. with. He was the best player I ever played against. Yes, and that's as fine a tribute as you could pay him, John. And we were going to talk about the Premier League. I'll just I'll tell you, Spurs are top. And we'll talk about the Premier League yeah. next yeah, week. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, John, thank you very much. We're grateful to John, of course, for that very special memories and uh, tribute to Sir Bobby Charlton. We're grateful to John. 